Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to cover EC2 or Elastic Compute Cloud Service. Okay, so what is EC2? So EC2 offers resizable compute capacity in the cloud. Simply put, you can just rent a server in the cloud. So instead of buying physical hardware, and instead of buying GPUs and CPUs to train your AI and ML models, you can just simply rent these services, rent these um, uh, this hardware uh, by leveraging EC2, and that you know will take care. And, e and AWS will take care of all the management and all the configuration for you. You just need to select what type of instance you are looking to to use. So AWS EC2 can be used to acquire, configure, and scale capacity in a very easy fashion. And it offers seven times fewer downtime compared to the next largest cloud provider, which is again, very, very powerful. And EC2 covers 22 regions and 69 availability zones all over the globe. All right, so let's take a look at the various instance types. So first, there is the, what we call it standard. There is memory optimized there is compute optimized, and there is accelerated computing or GPUs. So let's go ahead and check out. So if you guys go to this link, you will find that here all the information is available for you uh, um, within the AWS documentation. So you will find that uh, Amazon SageMaker provides a selection of instance types that are optimized depending on your application. So for example, if you are training, let's say a deep learning model, that requires a lot of um, uh, uh, GPUs. So you need to go ahead and leverage the right type of instance to perform the training for it. So again, these instance type can comprise of varying combinations of CPUs, GPUs, memory, and networking capacity. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. So here we have the first type, which is what we call the standard uh, type. These are the T2s. So you'll find there is T2 medium, which simply here has uh, virtual CPUs, have two, and for the memory is four gigabytes. Here we have the network performance, we call it low to moderate. So we, we, we're actually gonna stick with MLT2 medium in, in several case studies throughout the course, because again, we don't need massive, you know, like compute uh, power or any massive storage. Most of the data that we'll be dealing with are, I would say, medium to small size. So, uh, so that will be uh, sufficient for us. But if you want to take it to the next level, you can and maybe speed up the training process, for example. You can go ahead with T3 medium, you can select T3 large, and as you go down, you will find the CPUs are going up and the memory as well are going up too. So now we have like, you know, like a, like a massive uh, compute and um, a lot more powerful, basically, processing to train your AI and ML models. So these are the first type or categories. The next one is what we call it memory optimized. That's specifically for algorithms that require a lot of memory to train. And these are what we call the R's. So you find the R5 large, for example, there is uh, R5 2x large and so on. We have the compute optimized. So these are the C's. So you'll find there is C5 large, C5x large and so on. Okay. And then there is the accelerated computing, and these are specifically for GPUs. So again, if you're training deep learning models, you will need MLP3 2x large, for instance, or maybe 8x large. Or if you're training like a massive network, you need to leverage more, uh, more of an advanced ones in here. Okay. All right. So that's, again, a very brief overview of all the various types of instances. So the question is like, why are you, why are you mentioning that? I'm mentioning that because when you go, um, when, we, when we go to SageMaker and we're gonna start to actually develop our, um, our notebook and, um, and um, train our AI and ML models, you need to specify the type of instance, okay? Don't worry about the code in here. Again, we're gonna discuss every single line in great details throughout all the case studies. I just wanna show you here that you need to specify when you train your model, you need to specify what type of instance you are leveraging. So when you see ml.m4.xlarge, now you know what, what am I referring to, okay? That's basically the type of instance that we'll be training our AI and ML model upon. Okay, so before I move on, I just want to cover the, what we call it, inference acceleration, okay? So if you go to what we call it Elastic Inference or EI, so you will find that uh, Amazon SageMaker offers you with the option 
to basically have an accelerator on top of your endpoint and you will be able to leverage the speed of these accelerators at a fraction of a cost of having a dedicated GPU available for you. So simply put, you can use what we call it Elastic Inference or EI to speed up the throughput and decrease the latency to be able to obtain or get real-time inferences on your deep learning models. So basically when you train uh, an, 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 a deep learning model and the training is complete, then you need to deploy that model and create an endpoint. And then you need to make inferences on that endpoint. For example, send it an image, let's say, to get a prediction. So what you could do is that instead of leveraging or using a dedicated GPU instance for your endpoint, you can simply use just a simple CPU instance and attach an accelerator to it. And that's what we call it elastic inference in here. And we're going to discuss that again in a lot, in a, in a lot more details when we, um, when we cover the deep learning uh, part which is going to be project number five but just I just want you to know from a very high level what do I mean by EI or elastic inference and here you can select the type of accelerator that you're looking for these are we call it the EIA okay and you can select here there are medium large x large and so on so that's just a quick point that I wanted to outline let's go back to our slides in here so so here for the um, instance types you will find that we have four primarily different types and that will dictate the pricing for your instances. So first you have what we call the on-demand, second one is what we call reserved, and then we have the spot, and then we have the dedicated host, okay? So let's cover them in detail. So first, what's on-demand? Simply, again, as the name, you know, like says, it's just on-demand. You just, you need it now. I just want the instance right now. So it will be available for you, but you have to pay for it. Okay, so AWS users pay for compute capacity by the hour and there is no long term commitments and there is zero upfront cost and payments and compute capacity is scalable. So you can actually scale or reduce based on demand. Okay, and the second type of instances, which is what we call a spot instance. So a spot instances generally offer a reduced price compared to the on demand instance. And simply here, you think of this a kind of, you know, like, like competing with other customers on the availability of an instance. So for example, if there is no general demand, you know, and the instances are available, then you will be able to run the instance right away. Okay, so you will be able to, when the capacity permits, you're just gonna go ahead and use it, okay? And there is what we call it the spot price, and that's the price you pay for the spot instance and it's adjusted based on your availability zone and demand as well. And sp spot instances could save up to 90% compared to the on-demand instances. And please note, when we actually train our um, AI and ML models in SageMaker, you will find that you can activate, what we call it spot instance equals to true, kind of activate them. And I will show you as well that we can save a lot of money when we actually do when we actually do so. We can save again up to 90% compared to the on-demand instances just by adding one simple line of code in there. And then we have what we call a reserved instances. And these type of instances offer capacity reservation. So simply you're gonna say, okay, I need to reserve for let's say three years upfront. And, and, and that's it. So that's what we call a reserved instance. You can get a massive discount on those and you will ensure that they are available for you and you don't need to stick with an on-demand or the spot ones. And reserved instances, again, can offer up to 75% savings compared to the on-demand instances. And you can get one to three years of commitment to an EC2 to optimize cost as well. So as you pay, as you have longer term uh, contract, like let's say three years, then you will be able to obtain these instances as a, at a much cheaper rate. And then we have the last one, which is a dedicated host. We're not going to be dealing with dedicated host, but simply it's a physical EC2 server that is dedicated for your use. So if companies, for example, have, let's say, certain licenses that they have already bought, okay, they already invested in them, okay, and they wanted to leverage those licenses. So what uh, AWS offers is that it offers what we call a dedicated host. So dedicated host offers flexibility and cost effectiveness of using your own licenses. Okay, so you can actually use your own license, but you can leverage the resiliency and simplicity and elasticity of AWS as well. 
Don't worry about the dedicated host. We're not going to be covering that in the course. Primarily, we're going to stick with the on-demand instances and the spot instances as well. So the next service that I wanted to cover is what we call it Identity and Access Management, or IAM for short. So IAM allows users to securely access and manage AWS services. So IAM is actually a free and global service. So there is no need to define any region for it. So IAM allows you to create AWS users and groups and give and deny them access to certain services such as EC2, for example. So when we actually train our uh, AI and ML models in SageMaker, you need to specify the access, like who has access to your notebook instance, who is able to uh, access your S3 buckets and so on. So the AWS root account is the account that you create with your email address and password. And root account has full administrative access. So they can actually, um, whoever has access to this account can do anything basically with it. They have the ultimate power. So it's very risky to use it at all times. And simply if these credentials are stolen, someone can go ahead and, you know, like mine Bitcoin, for example, based on your account, and you will end up with a very expensive bill. So AWS recommends that you do not use your root user for everyday work and you instead create an IAM role or identity and access management role and then lock away the root user's credentials, okay? And when we actually go to SageMaker, I'm going to show you uh, where I'm going to specify the IAM role in the code. But I just want to give you from a very high level, what do I mean by identity and access management? What's IAM? So when we actually go there in code, you will be familiar with it. So you can use your um, root user credentials only for select few management tasks. And the root account should have an extra layer of security using multi-factor authentication. And you can read more about identity and access management here in this link. Please note that IAM, there is a lot of uh, details associated with it, but we're not going to be covering all of them here specifically in this course. I just wanted to know you like, okay, there is IAM, we're going to be using it in within SageMaker, and we're going to be referring it to it when we actually go to the code. Okay. All right. So that's all what I have for this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. In the next lecture, I'm going to cover an introduction to AWS SageMaker. Please stay tuned and please enjoy AWS SageMaker practical course. And I will see you guys in the next lecture.